What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fed. And this is the commodity. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is the commodity. And today we are reacting to the Peridua Myvi versus the Ativa versus the, the Proton X50. X50. I'm Batman. I'm so Batman. we're super excited. Obviously, the Ativa just launched. Uh, it's big news in Malaysia right now. Um, we kind of have uh, different opinions. I like the styling of the Proton. He likes everything about the Ativa. Nice. I like everything about the Ativa too. I just like the sportiness of the, the Proton look. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of give you guys an idea of what we would choose at the end. We haven't watched this video yet, so it's going to be a true reaction. But first, but first, check out our Discord link in the description down below. We're getting fast to 200 or so. 200. Also, check out our Patreon down below description. I might even throw it right here. And also, hit that like button to trigger the YouTube algorithm. Why are you yelling? Because I'm in it right now, and I'm in the zone, and we're still trying to hit 15,000 subscribers by April, April 20th. 20th. We're going to get tattoos. Proton logo. And something else, maybe. Something. We just don't know what he's going to get. Subscribe. Do it. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Let's jump into this. Peridu <laughs> Ativa, Myvi, Proton X50. Let's go. And link to the video in the description down below. Yes. The original okay, video. So we've got the latest stock of the town, the new Perodua Ativa. And remember, it's Ativa and not the Ativa. So anyway, here we got a simple comparison video between the new SUV versus the perennial bestseller in Malaysia, the third generation Myvi. And just for fun, we've got that as well, the Proton X50. Here we're gonna do a quick comparison in terms of the pricing, the size, interior size, build quality, as well as a simple comparison in terms of driving experience. Let's go. I like his shirt. So we've already kind of picked ours before we started the video. So what I would personally pick off of aesthetics only. Now we've kind of looked at at least the X50 and the Ativa. We have yet to really do a deep dive into the Myvi, which that video will be coming soon. Yeah, so let us know if you want it. Uh, but from the aesthetics, I picked the Ativa. I like the aesthetics of the Proton. Yeah. So, I mean, to be fair, I would go either way. I would probably not go with the Myvi just because of size. When it comes to buying a brand new car, the most important factor is always going to be the price point. How much is the car's price? Over here, these three cars all cover very different price ranges. The Myvi over here is clearly the cheapest of the lot, starting from 40 to 50,000 ringgit. The Ativa is a clear step up from 60 to 70,000 ringgit. The Proton, meanwhile, is a whole different class up. It's from 80 to 100 thousand ringgit so clearly these cars are not fighting in the same class they are made for different people they are very different target markets for these three cars and talking about price the next big thing of course is the maintenance cost so let's talk about that now there is a big question mark over the Activa's maintenance cost because this being a turbocharged car a lot of people are saying that it's surely going to cost a lot more to maintain to own compared to a regular na myvi but believe it or not, we've done the math, and according to Produa, these two cost virtually the same over the first five years or 100,000 kilometers. These two cars is gonna cost you about 3,200 ringgit. I wanna do that math real quick. Um, On the pricing? Yeah. So the 80 to 100,000 was the Proton, so let's do 90. Thousand RM to USD. How much so did he say? The Twenty-two thousand dollars for the Proton. The but how much did he say the, the, the was repairs? That's what I'm more focused on. Oh, repairs. Thousand kilometers. These two cars is gonna cost you about three thousand two hundred ringgit. Three thousand two hundred. So about eight hundred. Well, seven seventy-five. So over the span of five years. Yeah. But to be fair, that's, I would say that's almost standard 
what is so he said a uh, hundred thousand kilometers is that what he said mm-hmm. um so on a typical car nowadays at least in the united states just about every car manufacturer is using uh synthetic oils so mm-hmm. that you can do less oil changes so you're looking at about i would say like an oil change is like 80 bucks yeah um, and, and you do it every manuf- 10,000 miles. And a lot of manufacturers offer them free for the first yeah. year or two years. Maybe. Yeah. So with Toyota, it's the first two years or 25,000 miles. So you're pretty much covered on your oil changes and your tire rotations for the mm-hmm. first two years. Uh, after that, you're looking realistically, you're, you're under $100 on your maintenance every yeah. single time, which is crazy to think because I remember hearing when uh, I had my first BMW, it was like 220 bucks for the oil change. Now we're getting to that kind of on an average car yeah but you're only doing it once a year yeah. and then these have timing typical cars in the u.s have timing chains not belts anymore so you're kind of dealing with less maintenance there uh serpentine belts very seldom do you have to change them um air filters you change them but they're not that expensive you're looking at 50 bucks for cabin and uh uh, engine air filter you don't have to change your cabin one if you don't mind it being a little stinky yeah <laughs> especially in his car yeah um beyond that the maintenance is so minuscule we're talking windshield wipers things like that they sound pretty pretty you know low cost maintenance. and then you have your major maintenances at thirty thousand uh one hundred twenty thousand sixty thousand but even then they're still very minimal yeah so that's based on regular servicing only. That one over there, the Proton, is going to cost you over 50% more. That's going to be almost 5,000 ringgit. But why? Now let's move on to the size difference. These three cars are all technically B-segment vehicles, but clearly there is a vast difference in terms of size. Yeah. Let's use the Myvi as the benchmark here because, of course, everybody knows the size of a Myvi, right? Starting with this as the baseline, the Ativa is clearly one or two classes up. It is about 200 millimeters longer and a full 100 millimeters taller in terms of height. But bigger than that is the difference in terms of styling. While the Myvi is more rounded, very low, slung at the front, this one is very upright. The hood over here is very, very high and everything is pretty much straight cut. So put these two cars side by side and the difference is dramatic. It looks like a whole different cars. It's not even from the same family even. Now let's move on to the Proton X50, which again is another class up. This is over 300 millimeters longer than the Ativa. And if you look at the shape, these are again very, very different machines. This is a much more sculpted, much more modern looking car. Whereas the Ativa is a lot more boxy, very old school tall SUV. I don't agreed. I, no, I disagree with that. I That's think what that I like Ativa about Ativa looks modern. It I does. think the the uh, Myvi looks aged. Yeah, the Proton just looks sleek and just you just want to rub. I it. just see them you as two different cars for two different segments in the car industry, but I think they both look like they were manufactured in 2020, 2021 something right there i think the headlights look up to date i think all the fog lights and all those features the hood lines the paint design the grill look looks all within the right generation however i think the myvi looks dated yeah i'd give the myvi like a 2018 kind of ford focus kind of look. yeah yeah, yeah. i mean the headlights are really overly done on the sides because the car is so small but i just think it's the one car that looks like it's do for an upgrade right. uh, or d- redesign yeah tv design between the two it'll depend on your own personal preferences of course i much prefer the more modern look of the x50 but there will be a lot of people who prefer the tall high riding look of this new pro suv let me know what you think in the comment section below now let's move on to interior space and here we are in the latest pro ativa the front seat is in my own driving position i just remembered he has an X50? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cheater. So so <laughs> do you think he might have a little bit of bias? Oh, yeah. No. No, he knows true style when he sees it. That's oh, why whatever. I like <laughs> I call bias. And, and in the back here, I've got... Yeah, sorry, I didn't bring any tennis balls. So I have to use a water bottle as a measurement tool. It's fine, right? We all know how big a water bottle is. 
and I've got slightly less than a height of a small water bottle of leg room left. Now let's go see the Myvi whether it's got more or less leg. So to be fair, I am very honored he did comment in our last video that we reacted to one of his. Yes. And he is not much smaller than I am as far as height wise. Not much at all, no. Yeah, so to me, in that situation, I would probably be against the Ativa because of how small it is. Because I'm five foot six, five foot seven when I wake up in the morning. And he said he's just like right around five I, five. I think he said five five. I mean, we're five, splitting six. hairs at that yeah. point. So that is kind of that's tight. Yeah. That is very tight, even on a small car. Yeah. And now we are in the my V with the front seat to my driving position and there you go. The bottle can actually fit, so we've got about three to four centimeters more leg room here compared to the physically bigger Ativa. You should get a Myvi. Yep, I was surprised no. as well. Now move on. It's just the too X50. small. Let's go. It's bigger. And now finally, we're in the <laughs> X50, and the front seat is in my position. I mean, it is my car. And there you go. We've got about the same leg room as the Myvi. So. So you're gonna have to go with either the Myvi or the Proton. Oh, oh, it'd be Proton all the like, <laughs> like, like when I say the different my my choice between the two, it is literally splitting hairs. Yeah, because I think they both look really good. I like the design and I love the Proton logo. So I would, honestly, if the cost was much closer, I would probably go with the Proton. But the Paradua, the Tiva is. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a great design. This car. Proton's twenty two thousand dollars. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just talking in, in relative right, right, comparison. Compared to the others. Yeah, I mean we're not comparing a Mercedes Benz to this. Right. Yeah. It is slightly more spacious compared to the Ativa. But moving beyond space, this is clearly the much more comfortable cabin Ooh. to be in. I've got a real I forget about sexy. that interior. I yeah, I changed my opinion. And the seats themselves. But the Ativa is also really dope. Yeah. Now let's move on. Now to us Malaysians, the boot space can be just as important, if not more important, than the rear leg That's room pretty, itself. That's the same for Americans. This is one of the reasons why we're looking at a bigger car instead of a smaller sedan anyway, right? And here, in these three cars, it's another big proof that size is not everything. Size can be deceiving in terms of interior room. Now this is the X50, it looks the biggest on the outside. But the interior here, the boot space is actually smaller than the Ativa. Here we've got 330 liters. While if we move on to the Ativa's boot, here we've got 369 liters. Smaller car on the outside, but bigger on the inside. Now move on to the perennial favorite of Malaysians, the <laughs> Perodua Myvi. This here has 277 liters of space. That's so the impressive Ativa is about 30 to 40 percent bigger in terms of boot space. That is a big upgrade. Now on to build quality, you'll be surprised to know that the Ativa and the Myvi have pretty much the same level of build quality. There's not that big of a difference in terms of feel or quality. This looks more of like a... Like an off-roady kind of like sporty interior. I don't know, just like the handles right there with the... Like you got this and then you got that design right there. It's kind of like you're looking at a like an upgraded Jeep on the inside. Nope. Over here. But the Proton is like you're driving uh, a cloud of, of love. I don't know where you're getting your analogies. The plastic seems <laughs> are about the same level, similar kind of finishing, similar kind of fit and finish. But the only thing that lifts up the Ativa above the Myvi is in terms of slightly fancier use of textured plastics. Like over here, we've got some diamond pattern on the plastics over here, as well as there, plus more layered construction to the dashboard. It's little things like that that make it look more expensive than the Myvi. But strictly in terms of quality, yeah, it's about the same. But get into the Proton and suddenly there's a huge, massive jump in terms of build quality. Immediately you feel the premiumness of this cabin. There's a lot of... Well, you're I mean, just look at for the it bezels too. on that. I well, mean, that's it, got a handle on it too. Yeah, but that handle looks luxurious. It's it's, it's like a it's gun a, metal, a, a like a brush to aluminum. It's a different in cost. If you go and compare a... a even on trim levels of cars, you go from like a... LE to a limited or a platinum. Mm. 
It's just thousand R M two. What are you comparing? It's a forty-eight, forty-nine hundred dollar U.S. dollar difference. So about a five thousand yeah. dollar difference, which is quite a bit. It is. Which would get you from basically, if we were comparing like a Rav Four, it'd get you from like an XLE to like a Limited almost. Mm -hmm. Soft touch plastics, less fancy materials, better finish. Proton. So yeah. Hold on, Windows I, did, down. did you just see that? The trip button, you know, where it used to be like on the DA or in the instrument cluster or some other places, it's in the, it's right there. Oh, that's weird. That, no, that's awesome. That might it's be space saving. I, mean, I like that. Proton. I want to see the, the stars. There is absolutely no contest. The MyV and Ativa is about the same. The Proton is a few levels above that. So if that is your biggest concern on looking for a new car, it's this one or nothing. Now on to driving experience. Again, there is a big difference between these two. The Ativa is already a big improvement over the MyV, especially in terms of refinement, cabin noise, right comfort and even performance with this being a turbocharged engine and all that but having said that it's still a few levels below the proton in terms of performance the ativa here has a one, one liter, liter turbo engine while the proton has a 1.5 liter turbo yeah. engine there's Both no comparison cars have three cylinders but despite the proton being over three four hundred kilograms heavier than the ativa it is still the much faster vehicle here if you drive it side by side. There's also the transmission where this uses a double clutch transmission and the Ativa uses a CVT. The driving experience are very, very different indeed. I think if you're moving up from a regular automatic, this will feel a lot more natural. But if you're used to a CVT, this shouldn't be a problem for you. On the plus side, because of the smaller engine over here, you do have an advantage in terms of road tax where you only pay 20 ringgit a year for this one but 120 for that one but then again 100 bucks for cars that cost this much it's not really a big deal the Ativa is a significant step up from the MyV but the X50 is yet another big step ahead still Don't so I mean obviously the engine is going to be a huge huge differentiating factor when it comes to performance mm -hmm. uh i think three i'd still laugh at the three cylinder the last car that i remember that has a three cylinder was the i believe we had the mitsubishi uh mirage yeah and i believe that's a three cylinder but those got discontinued i think almost as fast as they were brought to the u.s uh beyond that i mean we got like five cylinders the original uh chevy canyon had a five cylinder which again the, I think that engine went away as fast as it came in. Yeah. But, um, I mean, all in all, truthfully, the $5,000 USD difference, it would definitely be worth it going with the X50. Yeah. No, I agree. Don't forget, though, there's a big gap in terms of pricing between the MyV and Ativa and an even bigger one to the X50. In this case, you do get what you pay for, and spending more gets you the better quality product. Having said that, all three models here are still very good buys in their own price markets. So there you go, a quick look at the new Produa Ativa. As the prices would suggest, there is a clear jump at each one of these cars where the Ativa fits nicely in between the MyV and the Proton X50. But don't worry, we'll have a much more detailed, much more comprehensive full review of the new Produa Ativa coming out very soon, where we will cover pretty much everything you want to know about it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Thank you for that video. That video is awesome. Yes, um, thank you. However, I would say that the other huge benefit that really stands out to me to going with the X50 is the dual clutch. I always think, yeah. I mean, if you can get used to the, it does make a little bit of a clunk to it and it feels more like an actual manual transmission as far as the drive feel than a CVT where, again, still a lot of people in the US absolutely dislike and apparently a lot of people in Malaysia also agree that they dislike the the CVT transmission. Now the same feeling can be found in the, the dislike because it's very different than a traditional gearbox where you right. have the, the the changing of the actual gears where the dual clutch basically has an ex a clutch ready to go at all times. So mm -hmm. it shifts much faster, which I love. I mean, all the ultra high performance cars are dual, dual clutch, clutch. Yeah. outside of like the Aventador, which is kind of on its way out anyways. Yeah. Um, you got anything you want to add? No, I mean, I was right all along. You know, the X50 is the master. 
For the five thousand dollars extra, no, I'm I, kidding. I, they're I, all worth what what they're priced at, and I mean the Myvi, it's a bestseller for a reason. It's it's a great value vehicle. You you get a great value for what you pay. The Ativa, you know, it's it's brand new and priced at and at a very aggressive price, uh, not much more than the Myvi, and you're getting a lot more features and a lot better styling. Uh, right. Going to the X50, obviously you're going to pay more. It's it it feels and looks more luxurious on the inside. The exterior looks aggressive, but again, the the Ativa has a beautiful exterior design. Um, Do you remember what the price difference is uh, from the X50 to the X70? No, I don't remember. It's either. not a huge like I mean it's a big difference, but it's not like a it's twenty thousand dollar difference. Right. Yeah. So, because we do have cars that we sell here that are that big of a jump from really one level to the next, because you take the Highlander and then you jump over to the Sequoia. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is all honesty, as far as amenities go, you're better off in the Highlander than yeah. the Sequoia yeah, because the Sequoia is aged and it's due for an update. They're kicking it. Are they completely dropping you? Yeah. No, that was the. Land they're cruiser. they're getting rid of the Land yeah. Cruiser. Land Cruiser moniker is going over to Lexus. Yeah, and they're dropping the LX uh, nameplate. But yeah, no, I mean, each one is worth what you pay, in my opinion. And I well, okay, so for bang for buck, if we're talking about five thousand dollar difference, I feel like you're actually getting more for your money on the X fifty. I agree. Because five thousand dollars, yes, it is a lot of money. No, five thousand U.S. dollars. Yeah, five thousand U.S. dollars is a lot of money in general, but when you're going up in size, amenities, uh, probably, I mean, we're talking horsepower, like drastic engine size. Um, you are getting every bang for your, you're getting every dollar in value back. Right. But you can't go wrong with any of these vehicles. I mean, from what we've learned about them, yeah, they're no. all good and they're respected classes you know yeah i'll give you that for yeah. sure i just think that we're i think uh once the myvi does get like the upgrades the, because i think it could look dope as hell if they just did a little bit of here's and there's and kind of let proton do their own true thing because yeah. what i understand is that is basically a rebadged i believe mitsubishi uh i could be wrong i apologize if i am paradua. yeah the paradua did i say proton i'm yeah. a paradua i'm sorry um, I think it's a just a rebadged version of another car, and if they would let them do it, based off of the the uh, Ativa, they would kill it. Yeah. Now guys, again down in the uh, comments, let us know what you guys think you would go for. Um, if money wasn't the issue and you just had a choice of these three cars, what would you go with? Right. Uh, also in the uh, description, again, we're gonna leave the uh, the link to our discord link to our patreon and uh, link to this video and link to this video if you guys want to go uh, give some props to the original video so so with that being said my name is miles and my name is fez thanks for watching guys peace out